Hi everyone, welcome to TSAM Digital. My name's Amy and today I'm joined by Stephen van der Wettering, who's the founder of Impaxis. So it's great to have you, Stephen. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to, nice to be here. Of course. And um, obviously you're one of our sponsors for the Summit for Asset Management East Coast. It's nice to have you in the run-up to the event to hear a little bit about your company before everyone gets to meet you in person. And today we're going to be discussing investment operations outsourcing. So just to get so get started, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, your company, and some of the challenges that buy-side clients are facing today? Sure. I, I uh, founded uh, Impaxis about 18 years ago. I worked in operations, pretty much all investment operations all my life. Um, and um, you know, I'm really excited to be at the conference. It's The conference is a uh, a great place to meet with other firms that, and and actually other partners that we work with. So um, a place to share ideas and and really network. Um, but as far as the operational challenges that are facing investment managers these days, what we're seeing a lot of is high turnover in staff. I mean, it's, it's almost cliche at this point, um, but the great resignation is definitely infecting operations. Um, and in addition to that, there's an ever increasing workload. Uh, there's more accounts, more assets, different types of assets. Uh, there's just more work to be done in in an investment operation than than there used to be. It seems it seemed like a, you know way back when things were simpler, and um, uh, maybe at the time they were complicated. But relative to today, they're even um, you know today is way more complex than than before. And the last thing is that it's what we're seeing with a lot of our clients is that their largest clients are just expecting lots of customization um you know whether it's the it's stretching you as to the kinds of assets or the way that you manage an account or um uh basically the way that you report on those assets and and so operationally there's a whole bunch of challenges that come along with that yeah absolutely and in light of that turnover the increased workload how are you helping clients to scale their businesses then because it's very difficult to achieve that level of customization and maintain the workloads of course yeah, really. I mean, this day and age, the most important thing, and you'll probably hear me say it over and over again, is automation. I, I mean, automation enables a lot of things. I mean, when we talk about some of the challenges that firms are having around um, uh, just just the human capital and people not being available or or uh, people quitting or what have you, uh, automation, we're finding lots and lots of different use cases where you can apply automation to uh, a, a job that used to, you know, for the longest time has taken a person to do. And so the automation is getting more sophisticated. The, um, the workflows around the automation that you can apply help out with uh, that great resignation problem, but also they also help out with your business for scale. Right, because automation not only could it save you labor that sometimes is the driver, but also you can get to a higher levels of quality and more consistency and throughput. Right, so the automation just it'll just keep running. Uh, it's easier to scale when you have automation um, uh, in play rather than just having to you know you you run out of what what the computers can do. Now you need to scale with people. Yeah, absolutely. That makes sense to me because there's only so much that manpower can do, as you say, when you're doing everything manually. Um, so I think that is a natural solution that comes to mind. Um, but I think one thing that asset managers might be wary of is, you know, issues like security, that like when you're dealing with technology and sensitive data, what would you say you know, to sort of reassure that there are best practices when it comes to automating and making sure that things stay secure and in control? Yeah, well, there's a number of things that you can do. And so when you... Uh, build the automation, or if, you, if you're having somebody outside your film build, firm build the automation, obviously you can set somebody up with a sandbox uh, so it's in a controlled environment and then you can release it into your environment in, in a controlled fashion. Um, but more uh, more generally, I would say when you're looking for a partner to work with around this kind of work, you you want to see, you know, do they have an audit, right? Has an outside party come and looked at the way that they run their business or the way that they operate? And this there's international standards on, on the way that firms work and deal with sensitive information. Uh, ISO has a... Um, Certificate ISO 27001, which is the international standard around information security and the way firms firms handle that. So if you're dealing with service providers or partners that have those kinds of certificates, at a minimum, you, there's sort of a base level uh, understanding and clearly that they appreciate the challenges uh, around information security. And if it's you know, these certificates and audits are done by outside 
third parties. So, um, I mean, that's that's the best place to, for you to to get a sense as to okay how they're set up and the kind of controls that they have in place. Yeah, absolutely. And um, we often think about outsourcing as a uh, you know strategy to deal with you know high turnover, things that kind of come come in waves depending on the time of year and depending on what's going on in the sector. When we think long term about someone who's going to outsource for a long time. Where do you see firms who are, you know, investing in these kind of things for three, five, ten years time? Should they be outsourcing with one provider for that amount of time? Should they be looking to, you know, revamp their internal capacity? How should they kind of plan for the future? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the world's getting more and more complicated. And the reality is for you to do a good job and be an expert in everything, it's just impractical. It's better for you to focus on your core business and you know have somebody else that has expertise in an area do the work for you. And so the firms that are willing to partner up with uh, outsourcing providers, that's something that you're going to get. Uh, you, you're going to get somebody that's a, that's an expert in in their domain, and they can apply that to to your operational needs. So long term, I I believe that firms that partner with outsourcing providers uh, are going to be in a better position to grow just because it's not taking up management mind share, all the million little things that need to be done in order for you to communicate with your clients or bill on assets or, you know, manage, manage data from uh, uh, the clients that you're working with. It's a very valid point. So I think it sounds like there's some obvious problems and these are the obvious solutions. So I think it makes sense to me. And obviously it'll be nice to hear a bit more about these in detail at the event itself. Um, so we're looking forward to having you at the summit for Asset Management East Coast on the 6th of October, where you'll obviously be speaking there. So people can meet you in person and meet some of the Impaxis team. Um, but for now, thanks so much for joining us, Stephen. Great. Appreciate it, Amy. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching.